Hey, good Monday morning, guys. And first and foremost, I want to apologize for being MIA for the last week. Uh, I was actually really busy preparing D for his upcoming surgery, and he's actually going in tomorrow. So keep sending your positive vibes. He's going to be just fine. We're really excited simply because this is his final surgery. So, uh, so much going on. But uh, there's actually been a ton of questions coming in. So let's go ahead and dive into these, and I can just start answering some of those questions and teach you guys something new. So the very first one is from Sophia, and uh, Sophia, you've got a heck of an exercise plan here. She is training six days a week, Monday through Sunday, with Friday being her rest day, and we're talking, she's an endurance runner, so uh, she's got a strength training day on Monday, Tuesday, five-mile run. she got some 45-minute tempo runs in there, uh, three-mile runs, five-mile run, and then a nine- to 13-mile run near the end of the week. So she's doing a lot of exercise, but Sophia says I eat small amounts because every, oh, every two to four hours because I heard that it keeps the metabolism working fast. So she's eating about 45 times a day. I started running when I was 14, almost 15, and now I'm almost 17. My body hasn't changed all that much. And one day, I'll, one day I weigh 125, the next I'll weigh 130. Okay, I'm gonna address that in just a second. My goal is to be 115 in the next three months. Um, I don't know what I should eat and how much, and if so, could you tell me how many times of what foods I should eat? That would be great. <laughs> I would love to tone up my stomach because my legs are really nice, but that's it. Uh, she says, I saw a couple of your videos and you guys said that carbs are good and also eating five times per day is good, but I'm not sure. Should I be eating too many carbs? Okay, a um, couple things I want to talk to you about, Sophia. Uh, first and foremost, because you're so active and you've got all this active muscle tissue on your body and you're utilizing it a lot. Now keep in mind, especially when you're doing long distance running, um, you're going to be consuming, your, your muscles are going to be burning, the majority is going to be carbohydrate or fat for fuel. Now. Here's a quick little uh, trick of the trade. The more active you are, if you're looking to lean out, you wanna eat a higher carbohydrate, low fat diet. The more sedentary you are, you wanna eat a lower carbohydrate, high fat diet. Keep in mind, carbohydrate, that's like 87 octane for our body, for our muscles. So the more active we are, we need to push that fuel into the system. You are extremely active, so you actually need to consume a high carbohydrate diet. And we're talking, especially considering the amount of exercise that you're going through on a daily basis, uh, roughly, I'm gonna need you eating at least six meals a day, probably about 30 to 40 grams of carbohydrate per meal. That, that can seem like a lot, However, really when it comes down to this, what I want you to focus on, instead of the carbohydrate intake, I want you to focus on reducing your fat intake, okay? So, higher carbohydrate, lower fat, especially because you're so active. Now, granted, body types come into play, and so you might have a digestive system that uh, has a little bit of a harder time with the carbohydrate intake. However, simply because you're going through so much muscle contraction, I can guarantee you that your muscle cells are extremely insulin sensitive, so you're not gonna overtax your pancreas. Now, when it comes down to the carbohydrates that you should be eating, go ahead and check out those food lists. Now, keep in mind, also on those food lists though, those are what we call, the majority of them, are what we call slow carbohydrates. The fruit that are on the list are a little bit faster. Now, slow and fast carbohydrates, what I'm talking about is, of course, the rate at which it takes your body to break that carbohydrate down in your small intestine to get into the bloodstream to raise your blood sugar levels. Surrounding your runs, surrounding your workouts and your runs, you can eat those faster carbohydrates. You can have maybe a little bit of juice or some, some white rice, maybe some, some sugarier foods, maybe like a, a jamba juice or something like that. However, any other times during the day, it's important that you're gonna be focusing on those slower carbohydrates. So, once again, let's take this back to eating five to six meals a day, probably about 30, maybe even upwards of 40 grams of carbohydrate per meal, especially on your workout days. But I want you to focus on lowering that fat intake. So, no more peanut butter, I saw it in that list. We're gonna go ahead and take those out and let's see what your body does in the next, in the next couple weeks. Come back to me, tell me how you're doing. I'm really curious to see what happens when you pull all those fats out of your diet and push a little bit more carbohydrate in. I think you're gonna see some incredible results. So Sophia, thank you so much for the question and I hope that answers some of, uh, some of the things you got going on. Really looking forward to hearing back from you and hearing how the journey's going with that. All right, so the next question is from Trish and she says, uh, my question is that I weigh 230 pounds and I'm five foot four. I'd like to go down to 170 or 180 at least. 
but my problem is that my husband works nights, so I've changed my sleeping schedule so I can spend more time with him. We go to bed around 6 a.m. and get up around 2 p.m. And then I'm not hungry till around 6 or 7 p.m. and I don't eat anything before or I hardly eat after that. I may grab a snack. So my question is, what can I do with the schedule to help me lose weight? All right, well Trish, you need to read my article about sumo dieting. So jump on the blog, go back and read that article, reshapethenation.com forward slash blog, read about sumo dieting. What is it the sumo wrestlers do? Well, they wake up, and keep in mind, sumo wrestlers, they intentionally want to gain as much tissue as possible, both fat and muscle. Their sole goal is to get as big as they possibly can. They have mastered the art of gaining weight. And what do they do is they wake up in the morning and they skip breakfast intentionally. They train on an empty stomach. They don't eat until about four to five, six hours later. So they'll eat like a late lunch, sleep, wake up, eat again. And their, their meals are predominantly poi, which is, uh, it's a combination of rice and chicken and lard and a bunch of other stuff. So it's super high calorie. But the key though is that they're eating a late lunch, then they sleep, then they wake up, they eat again, then they go back to sleep. That's how they gain so much weight. Why am I bringing this up? Because it mirrors the American lifestyle. What do we do? Well, most of us actually wake up, we skip breakfast because we're not hungry. Actually, instead we throw down a cup of coffee. It increases the levels of cortisol that are actually in our blood. So basically we're putting our body under all kinds of stress. Cortisol, I'm sure you've all seen the commercials with cortisol and everything. It really does stimulate the body to store fat in the abdominal area. So what we want to do, and how do we get that cortisol down and put your body into a fed state to jack your metabolism through the roof for maximum weight loss? Eat breakfast. You got to eat breakfast. Now, I know your schedule is a little bit backwards, especially because you're waking up at 2 p.m. It's okay. Granted, circadian rhythms do get into the mix here and it is wonderful to have a normal sleep-wake cycle. The body really is made to go to bed with the sun and to wake up with the sun. So of course, going to bed at eight or nine o'clock at night and waking up at five in the morning is really healthy hormonally. However, you know what? We've all got priorities and it sounds like you're doing the best you can. What I want you to do is pretend like it's no different. 2 p.m. is breakfast for you. So you wake up and by 2.15, I want you eating something with carbohydrates in it. Now, why do I say carbohydrates? Because as your body breaks down those carbohydrates in, you know, goes through the stomach, which is a vat of acid, pushes into the small intestine, and in starts absorbing through the small intestine into the bloodstream, who gets it first? Your liver takes it. Now, your liver was supplying your heartbeat and your breathing and your brain function overnight. So your liver, which is like a fuel tank for carbohydrates, it was already supplying that fuel overnight, so it's low. When we fill that liver back up with carbohydrate, i.e. maybe some cereal, some oatmeal, maybe some fruit or something like that, that liver is going to take that carbohydrate, put your body into a fed state, increase thyroid conversion, and thyroid is like the thermostat on our metabolism, cranks that sucker through the roof, bam, here goes your metabolism, you're in a fed state, you're going to burn more calories throughout the day. So 15 minutes within waking up, within 2 p.m., I need you eating some food. What also typically happens, especially for everybody watching out there, what happens when you eat breakfast? Normally about two and a half to three hours later, you're hungry again. So it automatically tries to put your body on that set metabolic clock. This is a fantastic thing because I need you feeding every two and a half to three hours anyway. That's gonna keep the metabolic rate, it's what we call the thermic effect of feeding. And we can actually spike that metabolic rate every two and a half to three hours. Very, very important. So uh, Trish, I hope this really helps. When you wake up, don't you dare wait till six or seven at night to get that first meal. You're sumo dieting that way. Uh-uh. Let's take it back. You're gonna eat within 15 minutes. You're gonna eat every two and a half to three hours after that. And watch, you're gonna see an incredible, incredible difference in your body. So, all right guys, hope that answered all your questions and I'll see you in a day or two. Please keep those positive vibes flowing for David. He's going to be going under first thing tomorrow morning. So I'll keep you guys in the loop. And actually, I'm going to be in the ER. They're going to let me scrub in because I'm, I'm there for all of the surgeries. So um, I'll keep flickering them and Twittering you guys and let you know how things are going. So, all right, guys, enjoy the day. I'll see you soon.